Hi everyone, and welcome back to the next diecast. For today's video, I'll be showing you and reviewing this 118 scale BMW M6 convertible dealer edition made by Paragon Models. So Paragon Models makes a lot of these uh, BMW um, dealer edition models. Um, in addition to the M6 convertible, they also make the M6 coupe and, uh, and the uh, Grand Coupe, which is like a four-door um, sedan version of the S6 uh, series. They've also made uh, the M4, both coupe and convertible, and the X4. Various models that uh, BMW has made for the past, um, like, eight, like, like, five to ten years or so. Um, and currently, a lot of them are going down in price. Mostly, I think the reasoning is because um, as these models get redesigned and discontinued, like, for example, the 6 Series is actually no longer being made um, and in production in 2018, um, and it's been replaced by the 8 Series. So I think as these models become redesigned or discontinued, um, prices on, on, these dealer, on these dealer edition models go down because the dealerships probably want to, you know, clear up space for uh, newer uh, models and whatnot. So you can find this M6 um, convertible for really anywhere um, between as low as $40 and as high as $110. It really depends on which site you're buying it from and what color variation that you're actually um, getting. I found this on Amazon for um, $61. I ended up paying a few dollars under that because I had some leftover um, um, gift card balance. And it was actually sold by a BMW um, dealership in Missouri. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, they even sent me like a like an information sheet like on their on their dealership shop and stuff like that. But overall, I think for $60, this model is very good. Um, and even for the $100 price range, I'd say it's still it's still fairly well done. But I, pr I wouldn't be paying much um, much more than $100 because there are a few um, flaws on this model that I'll get to throughout um, the review here. The M6 convertible itself, I think, looks really good. I I've always liked this uh, last um, this last iteration um, of, of the 6 Series. I think it's called the F12 or something like that. And we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, details of this model here. We'll start up here with the front. So Paragon, I think, did a great job with the lights. Of course, of course, they don't have any uh, pegs in them at all. Uh, the bulbs are nicely molded. They're actually separate um, pieces, too. There's a slight gap between the hood and, and, and the light, but that actually makes it easier for the hood to be um, opened. So that's not a big deal. These grills here, I think they're called like kidney grills. It's kind of a, a trademark feature of, of these cars. Um, they are see-through, and they're actually made of metal, too. Um, which I think is a really cool touch. A lot of times you get these kind of plastic grills. They're actually kind of like a charcoal gray look too. I don't know if that's like an exclusive to the M6 because the regular 6 Series on convertible does have some differences. Like I think there's chrome grills instead of this kind of gunmetal look, but I think it's really cool that these are actually made of uh, full metal. You can actually see like the radiator and stuff on the engine too. It's actually the only car I have in my collection that has these kinds of grills. And this uh, BMW badge up here, that has a separate piece and it looks very well done. Now, these lower grills down here, they're not they're not fully perforated. They're just kind of a textured mesh. That's something you'd see on like a Maisto or like a Welly, not something you would expect to find on an upper end model like this. So that is a little bit of like a disappointing feature. Um, and if you're paying upwards of $120, you would expect this to be kind of more detailed. But I think other details on this model kind of make up for, for, for that. The overall paint quality on this model um, is excellent. Uh, it's called... It's an orange, like they call it an orange. Like it does look like it's red, but it's actually a very, very deep um, shade of orange. I think it's called Shaker Orange. It's like S-A-K-H-I-R. I don't know how it's pronounced, but the M6 Convertible and Coupe both came in this particular color. Now Paragon, um, they also offer various interior variations of this model. Like I have the beige interior here. It also came with, with a white interior and a red interior. That's how these dealer edition models usually go. You'll get various color variations with interiors and exterior colors. Kind of like how they offer on the real versions of, of these cars. Um, the windshield, by the way, that is made of plastic, so be careful with that. I wish it was made of metal. You'd think for the price range it'd be made out of metal, but that's not a big deal. Taking a look at the side of the car, I think Paragon did a great job with the wheels. Um, the disc brake, of course, does spin with the caliper. The wheels are actually pretty stiff, though. And the steering, it does have steering, but it's very, very stiff. And it makes a super loud click, like when you move the wheels. I don't know if it's just a factory defect on mine or if all the models come with that. 
But again, for the price range that this comes at when it's not on sale, you'd think it would have slightly better um, quality in, in that sense. But aside from that, I mean, the wheels look great. And when the wheels are turned, it does really give the car like an aggressive stance, which I think looks great. There is also um, suspension too, as you can see here. These back wheels aren't aligned quite right. Um, they bow out a slight bit, but you can probably just bend them a little bit and they'll kind of like stay straight. Again, I don't know if it's a factory defect or if all these Paragon models come with that, but for the price range, I would be expecting slightly better quality um, in terms of that. And the overall panel gaps throughout the model um, look great. Everything is very flush and closed tight. Nothing's gonna like fall open and whatnot. Um, and these little side intakes here look great. There's a little tiny M logo inside them too that I'm just now seeing, which looks great. And the mirrors are done in plastic, but you really can't tell because the paint is just so well done and they're very, very sturdy. All right, taking a look at the back here. The badge back here is a separate piece, just like up in the front. And you have an M6 kind of imprinted um, on there. They're actually two separate pieces too. I don't think they're stickers, maybe they're metal. I'm not too sure. I don't want to be, you know, um, rubbing it around too much. The italics are very well done. Um, there's no gap whatsoever between the lens and the metal body, which look great. And then you have this, uh, then you have this tail light going across the top of the trunk too. And of course you get the German license plate down here and these exhaust pipes. Look a slight bit cheap in chrome, but at least they're completely um, hollowed out and they're painted black on the inside. And this model is very heavy. I would say it's heavier than my Norev uh, Maybach and maybe heavier than my Miso Chrysler 300C. You can just tell like that everything is made of metal on this model and that, and that it's made of high quality. So in terms of opening features on this model, we'll start back here with the trunk, which opens up like so. It's a very stiff opening piece too, and, and that's a good thing. Um, that means that it was built to you know last and whatnot. You do have a fully carpeted trunk, um, the, and the felt in here looks great. It looks just like the inside of the real trunk. And this trunk actually goes all the way back to these seats. This is actually one of the deepest trunks on a model that I have. I can't even get the camera to like see all the way back there because it's, it's such a long and deep trunk. Some models you'll see there, there's like a plastic piece that kind of stops the trunk um, from going all the way back because a lot of times we'll have these like dog-like hinges. But on this model, they make the hinges a lot smaller and they're actually pushed off to the sides kind of like how the real trunk would open. I'm sure there, there's like hydraulic hinges on the real trunk lid, but on this one, I think what they have there looks great. There is actually a liner underneath this uh, trunk lid. It looks like a little latch there as well. I think that's a very cool touch. Um, although I think the convertible top, like I can feel actually underneath this like metal portion here. The convertible top obviously I think would be closed underneath here. So maybe the trunk shouldn't be that far back or maybe the, 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 maybe the top would be like right behind that metal or right behind that piece there, I'm not too sure. But it is fully carpeted and it, and it looks great, especially for the for the price of um, $60. We'll close that up. Now Paragon does not give you a button to open the hood, so you kind of have to open it um, like with your finger now, like against the headlight. Kind of annoying, because then you gotta kind of do that, but it, it is a very kind of stiff opening hood, um, which is both good and bad, because you don't want to be, you know, poking it around on too much but it, it opens up like so. And it reveals a fairly impressively detailed engine in here. A lot of these uh, upper end models of BMWs and Mercedes Benz cars, they have kind of just like a one piece on engine. But on this one, you can see all the way down to the bottom of the car, there's various hoses and wires in there. This is one of the better upper end model engines that I've actually seen. Um, all this trim is actually made of, of a metal and the hinges actually go um, inside back here. There is kind of a liner underneath the hood. It's painted on in black. I guess it's like a heat resistant liner or something like that. There's a very tiny M badge on the center here. I think it, it, it looks great. You can tell it, it is a multi-piece um, um, motor in there too. But overall, they did, a, they did a great job with that. A couple warning labels on here too. I'm not really sure what they say. I think it's like watch your head or something. <laughs> like don't you know close the hood on yourself. And these are actually color-coded to match the uh, body of the car, these two. It looks like fans back here. So I think they, they, they did a great job. We'll close that up. We'll take a look at the interior next. The doors open nice and wide on these nice looking, um, hin on these uh, dog-like hinges. Actually, no, they're, they're not dog-like hinges. I'm not sure if they're spring-loaded or they're dog-like hinges, but um, they're kind of well-hidden and they, and they look very well done. 
So let's take a look at the door panel detail first. Um, I think Paragon did an overall good job. There's a slight kind of carbon fiber pattern with that window button there. It looks like you can actually push that uh, button on there too, which I think is a cool touch. There's a pattern going across the top of the door panel and down below here that has a functional pocket. Uh, overall, it looks very good. And I do love this, uh, this uh, color combo, kind of the two-tone um, black and beige. I was happy to find this particular color combo because I think it looks great on, on the M6. The seats look look well done overall. Um, they have kind of a nice texture to them. They do look a slight bit cheap because they have this kind of gap between like the back of the seat and, and the front of the seat. If they kind of filled that in or made the whole seat one piece, would have maybe looked a little bit um, nicer. But I think the overall shape and size looks great. There's even a little M logo inside of, or in the center of each of these two front seats here. Uh, we got a better look on this side here. Yeah, they did an overall good job. There's even like little buttons down here that they actually do fine detailing with. Um, and you get full seat belts too. The buckles don't look that well done though. They're just kind of these solid metal pieces. There should be a de there should definitely be a hole cut in the middle to simulate the real buckle, but at least they do the fabric seat belts and these separate buckles. Um, just wish they were a little bit more um, detailed. Might be a bit too fat too, these buckles. I like the detailing that they do with the silver trim around the uh, seat belt thing here. And of course, back here, you, you, you get some more of that fine detailing with uh, these seat belts and the detailing on the side panels here. This interior is uh, fully carpeted, just like the trunk. Very nice feeling and looking on um, carpeting in, in, in that sense, too. Kind of feels like the real carpet that would be on the real car. Um, very well detailed on the center stack and uh, dashboard here. You can see all the buttons are separately labeled and they're all painted on. And you can actually read what, it's, what some of them say, too. You can see like the convertible top button is uh, on that side there. And all the detailing with the shifter, it, it just looks great. There's no like paint transfer onto the tan or anything like that. I know on some of these models, they'll have like a spot of black paint here and there on, on the tan because um, the factory may have made a mistake. But on this one, I don't see any of that. I think it looks great. Um, the dashboard should have kind of a leather pattern on it, but it's just kind of a flat textured plastic. So they could have done a better job in that sense. But at least it looks very accurate to the real dashboard and, and the real car. Even the screen there, it's actually I'm turned on. And these vents have the fine detailing with the uh, with the little switch in the middle there and the buttons on, on the sides. And this door panel actually has more of those uh, little buttons because you get to open up all four windows on, on this side. The steering wheel also looks great. There's a little airbag logo and, and that BMW badge in the center, it looks very well done it, it, and it kind of pops out a little bit. Uh, there's the volume and, and, uh, and uh, the other controls on either side here on these two spokes. And then you have some more controls on the side um, next to the gauge cluster, which all look uh, very well done. You get these M6 uh, door sills here. I think they're stickers, but they're actually well applied. And I don't think, I think they might use some kind of like adhesive glue to make them kind of stay on there permanently. I know on some lower end models that have this sticker, they just peel up constantly, but... On this one, they're actually very well, um, they're very well centered, kind of blurry, but you can see there's actually a, there's, there's actually a 3D um, M6 badge on there too. Very, very cool. There are pedals on here, they're just very hard to see. Um, it would have been cool if they'd done these in silver, then you could actually see them, but uh, they have a nice look and feel to them, and they're uh, properly set behind the, uh, behind this uh, footrest back here. And on the undercarriage, you also get some nice, uh, uh, detailing. Uh, there's not too much to see, but that's kind of like how it is on the real undercarriage of the M6. You get the silver painted um, exhaust. There's actually a little vent down here. Um, you can actually see how the steering works a little bit too, uh, which I think is a cool touch. And everything else overall, I think, looks looks uh, pretty good. So Paragon um, overall, I think, does a good job with these uh, BMW models. Um, there's a lot to pick from, so if you're into the um, M6, it also comes as the uh, coupe, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning here. Um, but I think overall they did a good job. I would just watch paying um, over $100 because it does have a couple of those flaws, like the steering doesn't work that well, uh, the wheels are a bit stiff, and the seat belts aren't the best detail in the world. But I think for the price of, because I've seen it go as low as uh, $40 on some sites, I think that's an excellent price for this. And even the 60 that that I paid for it, well, the slightly um, under the $60, I think it's a great deal. Um, and it would look good, I think, with any a collection of, uh, you know, BMWs or any um, European cars for, for that uh, matter. As always, I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.